Up here in the front, it has one 12 volt battery on it. It also has a battery's disconnect. Since it has a 12 volt refrigerator, if you don't want the refrigerator pulling from your 12 volt battery all the time, you can turn the battery disconnect to the off position and pull the key out. And it will save the juice that's in the battery for the next time you get ready to use it. It also has a light for hooking up at nighttime, an up and down button to take it on and off the vehicle. And there is a manual way you can come through the top and manually crank the jack up or down for any reason. It won't work on its own. There is a manual way to get it up and down. We have the two 20 pound propane cylinders on it that are full, except for what we use to service the trailer. It doesn't have an auto changeover. It has an even flow regulator. So if you open up one till it goes empty, then you come out and open up the other. But if you open both of them up at the same time, it will pull from one till it's empty and then it goes to the other one until it's empty without showing you that the one that you're started out with is empty. On the bottle rack, it does have the quick connect up at the top. It also has the two little holes on either side of the tab for a bungee cord going underneath the metal rack. We also have a seven way holder on the left hand side of the tongue that will hold your chains and your seven way up off the floor so they don't get corroded by water. As we start down this side here, it does have the stabilizer jacks on all four corners. There is a manual crank handle in the front door side compartment for running those down. Magnets on each one of the lids to hold them up in place. Does have a through compartment from one side to the other. As we step back here, it does have the outside furnace connection. Sucks cold air in the bottom, hot air at the top. I always suggest putting a mud diver screen over that. For the simple fact, the screen is less than 15 bucks. It's $145 an hour for every hour that somebody has to take the furnace out to clean the mud divers out of it. While we're here too, it does have the fresh water drain right in front of the front axle. White pull handle. You have your city water connect that you can hook to with the water hose and regulator. And then your fresh water tank fill. Once I start filling a fresh water tank, I usually go to the inside of the monitor panel and watch the push the fresh button and watch it fill up one third, two thirds full. Once it hits full, I come out and turn the water pressure off going to the fresh water tank. You don't want to overfill it because it can cause the top of the tank to bust loose. Lug nuts on the trailer has been torqued at 100 foot pounds, that's what's recommended on the side. And they are air after pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. <coughs> 30 foot power cord is a 30 amp. Blue light on each end showing that it has 110 power coming through it. Your dump station's next. The three inch valve in the front is your toilet water. The two inch gray valve in the back will be your kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and shower water. Then you also have your two low water drain points. The blue is the cold side of the water system. The red is the hot side of the water system. They'll be used for winterizing and dewinterizing of the unit. Then you also have your park cable hookup and satellite hookup here in the back corner. The park cable hookup is if the park's got cable where you're at, you can hook that and you will have the same cable the park has on your TV on the inside. As you step around to the back, it is prepped for a backup camera. Doesn't have the camera there, but it is prepped for it. We also have the Lippert extendable ladder hook up on the back. So if you wanted to buy the ladder to go up and check your roof. We also have a spare tire that's been aired up to pressure, but it's not been torqued on. It's been put on with a wrench. We have an outside shower that has hot and cold running water going to it. And then we have our black tank flush up on the right hand side. So once you've emptied the holding tanks on the unit, you can hook a water hose and regulator up back here at this back corner. Helps flush out the nasty debris out of the inside of the black tank only. As we step around to this side here, the compartment above the hot water heater will allow you access into the back of the hot water heater. It also has two white valves going to the back of the hot water heater. And you do have your black tank flush vacuum breaker over in the corner. On the outside of the InstaHeat Suburban hot water heater, <coughs> it has a white switch. It is in the off position. We're going to turn it on so we can see the monitor panel light up on the inside. 
but the switch on the outside has to be in the on position for it to work on the inside. Once you're not using it, having it stored, you can push it back to the off position and leave it that way. You don't have to worry about it coming on when you're not around using it. I'm gonna slide that board back over there. There is another part cable or antenna hookup on the door side underneath the canopy and a 110 plug-in to plug your TV into that works off the antenna on top or the part cable either way. We do have the two outside speakers. I'll have to show them about the speakers when we get to the inside of the stereo. In your front compartment up here in the front, it does have your two manual crank handles. The little Z handle is for the tongue jack on the front of the unit. The brass colored handle does your leveling jacks on all four sides. Also has the dry erase surface on here so that if you wanted to write down your setup and break down to the trailer on it so you wouldn't forget nothing, you can do that. Or you can just let the kids play on it. We're gonna go back to the front door. We're gonna open the grab handle up. We're gonna fully extend the door open. The steps is the next thing. So we're gonna pull the little blue handle on the side that allows the <coughs> steps to come out. There's a push button underneath each one of the legs, 15 to 18 slots in the legs for adjustment of the steps. The main thing on the steps is once they come out and lay down, it has to lay flat in the threshold so that the front door fits over the top of it without scraping. Once the steps are out and the door shut, don't change the pitch of the trailer front to back because it can cause the steps to push up into the bottom of the door. We're gonna step up in the unit. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the left-hand side as we step up. At the very top, you have your solar panel readout to show you what the solar panels are putting out to the battery. You can go to the where it says back. It changes all the things. Shows you all the different things that it does. Then we're going to drop down to the monitor panel. Check your battery life. Shows you it's fully charged. That's not really accurate. To get an accurate reading of the battery, you need to have the 110 line unplugged. Anytime it's plugged into the 110, it's going to show you fully charged. Your freshwater tank is showing that it's empty. As it fills up with your water hose, it'll show one-third, two-thirds full. Same way with your black tank. One-third, two-thirds full. And your gray tank. Gray tank's going to be your kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and shower water. The first red switch on the left-hand side turns your water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The second light turns your LED lights on the awning. The next switch turns the light right here above us on. The main lights in the living room and kitchen area are on a push button dimmer. You can turn it on, hold the button down, and they will dim out. Hit the button again, hold it down, and they will brighten back up. On your Insta Heat hot water heater, it's showing you that it is on. You can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can run your temperature up and down. Anytime the faucet comes on, it's gonna show you a little flame on the left-hand side. It's gonna show you a little fan in the center side here. And up at the very tip top, it's gonna to tell you the temperature of the water coming out of the faucet that is opened. To do that, you have to have water in the unit and your pump switch on, and it will show you all the readouts. There is a picture on the iPad that shows you that it was working. As we step around there, we have the stereo up at the top, little push button in the center of it, and it does have a remote with it. But you have zones one and two. Zone one is inside of the bar. Zone two is your outside speakers. The outside speakers is on. We're gonna turn it off, turn these on. We'll turn this back off. It does have a HDMI cord hookup and a USB port hookup for charging your cell phones. The rest of the stuff on the table is the bracket kit that we hung the TV with. <coughs> the tabletop comes off the two pedestals down below, goes between the two benches. The two back cushions come over the top of the table to make a smaller bed there. <coughs> Excuse me. And there is storage bins underneath each one of the benches for extra storage. <coughs> TV's mounted on the wall here, goes up to the power booster. 
and the 110 outlet in the cabinet. <coughs> TV pulls away from the wall, swivels from side to side, goes back to the closed section. We're going to come back to the thermostat. We're going to turn it on. First thing it does is give you your fan speed low, fan speed high. We're going to go to cool, cool low, cool auto, cool high. You'll dial your temperature down for it. Hit the mode button one more time. It says heat in the lower left-hand corner. You'll dial your temperature up for it. Hit that mode button one more time, and it says off in the lower right-hand corner. Coming into the bathroom area, has a light switch on the left-hand side of the wall as we come in. <coughs> Excuse me. Narrow knob in the ceiling, cranks the vent up. Little black switch off to the side, turns the fan on for pulling moisture out of the bathroom area while you're taking a shower. We're gonna turn that fan off, and we're gonna crank it right back down. Has pretty good size storage cabinet for clothes, extra towels, wash rags. The unit has be, been re-winterized, showing you the antifreeze in there. Does have a foot flush on the right hand side. Push halfway down, fills with water, push all the way down, fills and dumps. Shows your water levels on the back of the toilet for usage. We have the GFCI outlet in the bathroom that controls all the 110 outlets in the trailer inside and out. There is a plug for the sink. Showers just like you have at home. Hot water on the left hand side, cold water on the right hand side on all your sinks. Does have a little storage in behind the door there. Just for extra towels and blankets. We're gonna come back up to the refrigerator. The thermostat for the refrigerator is on the lower of the unit on the right hand side. We're running at about seven. Shows minus 10 degrees in the top and 34 degrees in the bottom when we did our temperature check on that. We also have the breaker box down here at the bottom with the breakers being with your main being your top, AC, refrigerator, microwave, converter, and GFI outlets. Car fuses on the right hand side are marked from the top to the bottom what they are. Anytime one of those fuses would happen to blow, it will have a red light off on the right hand side of it that indicates that the fuse that it is by is blown. And you can also see them red lights from the inside through the tinted window. Microwave did warm my coffee up two days. Punch in whatever time you want for that. It also has a clock button that you can set. Let's say it's 2.30. Probably not 2.30. But hit the clock button again to the two center eyes is flashing. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is I can tell if I've left the trailer and come back to it if it's lost 110 power if it doesn't have the proper time. That's the only reason I set the time on it. There is a light for the stove top and a fan for the vent. We're going to turn a little button on the right hand side of the stove on. We're going to lift that glass stove top up two times. Once up out of the way of the front burner, second time up out of the way of the two back burners. It is also used as a backsplash to keep from getting grease and stuff over to the mini blinds and the backsplash. Anytime you turn a handle on, it will turn red, indicate it has gas coming through it. The striker on the left hand side will light all three burners up on top. Anytime they have gas going through them, they turn red. Same way with your oven switch. When you turn it to where it says pilot on, push down on the button. Using the same striker on the left hand side to light the oven. It's going to light the pilot on the oven. You're going to let it burn for just about a minute until it warms the thermocoupler up right above it. Then you can dial it up to the temperature you want for it lighting the oven. If you flip that switch to the down position, you still have the illuminated lights on the valves, but you also will have a light in the oven so you can see what you're baking. If we take the bottom drawer out of this side here, accesses you into the water pump down below. The water pump has extra hose on it with a one white valve that is in the winterizing position now so that if you decided to put water to the tank and use the pump, you'll have to turn that white valve back in line with the pump because the unit has been winterized, so it's still in a winterizing mode. 
all the paperwork for the trailer is up here at the top. There's two sets of keys. The purple key does the lock and deadbolt on the front door. The gray, gate, gray key does the two front compartments and your outside compartment. And then it has a 751 key that does your outside shower. <coughs> there is also a remote for the stereo to turn it on and off. And you can change the setting of the speakers one, zones one and two with the remote too. All the rest of the paperwork that was in the trailer is in that brown bag. Does have a little storage off to the side. Cleaning supplies, extra towels and stuff. <coughs> then you have your inside vent on the furnace. When you turn your thermostat to the furnace section and dial your temperature up, when the furnace lights, it also has a little glass eye right about in here that you can look through and see the flames burning inside the chamber so you know that it did light. On the bunk end, it has a USB port on either side of the couch. <coughs> it has a 110 outlet in either side of the cabinet on the closets. It also has a fire escape window on this side here. Two red handles lift up. Allows the window to come out for escape. Pull back on it, lock the two red handles back down, but it also will slide from side to side if you wanted to just slide it for escaping. It is marked as an exit. It also has a LP carbon monoxide detector down in there on the side of the cabinet. If it gives you one continuous beep, it is LP smelling. If it is carbon monoxide, it beeps four times, two times in a row at you. For the bed to be made down, you have to take the two cushions up off the side. You have to fold the couch down. And you can access into your front compartment underneath the couch. We have the little handles up here at the top on both sides. Loosens up. Plus the Murphy bed slide down. You can access either one of the USB ports on either side of the bed or either one of the 110 outlets on either side of the bed. And you do have a little storage up at the top for knickknacks and stuff. <coughs> All the lights can be turned on by the switch on by the door or they have a push button in the center. The white plate on that wall there is for access to the wiring for the awning. We're going to lift the bed back up. locks back in place lift up on the front of the couch till it folds up pull down on it we're gonna put the two cushions back on the sides we're gonna come back to the monitor panel because I did not show you the awning so I'm gonna close the door about halfway we're gonna extend that awning out <coughs> And I think I can get it all the way out with the trailer in front of us. That's pretty close. On each one of the awning arms, there is a pinch point that you can pull down against that would put the pitch of the rain coming off the back side of the awning. Same way with the front arm. It puts a pitch going towards the front. You always probably want to put the pitch towards the back because it's away from the door. But we do have the LED lights underneath the awning and there is blue lights in each one of the speakers on the outside. It's pretty decorative on the outside. Gonna come back in, we're gonna roll that awning back up. If I'm not underneath the canopy using it, it's just a push of a button in about a minute's time to roll it back in. The awning's one of the more expensive parts to have to put back onto the unit if it comes off. So I wouldn't leave it out overnight in a storm. I would just take a few minutes to push this button and roll it back up. That is basically everything on your unit. If you have any questions, I'll answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your time.